Hi everyone, and welcome to the Jesuit Institute. Over the next few weeks, there are a number of things on offer from the Jesuit Institute. On Ash Wednesday, which is the 2nd of March, we will offer a day of prayer to mark the beginning of Lent. The day of reflection will be offered both in person in Auckland Park and online. All are welcome. On Saturday, the 5th of March, we offer a morning workshop entitled Lent for Children here in Auckland Park. From the 11th to the 20th of March, we will offer an eight-day individually directed silent retreat at Auckland Park. And we have space for seven people to make this retreat. It will be directed by well-trained spiritual directors. And then at the end of March, from the 21st to the 27th, we offer an Enneagram retreat at the beautiful Origins Retreat Center in the Cradle of Humankind. It will be led by Vilma Chesa, who's well known for her practice of the Enneagram. We have many events planned for this year. If you would like to know more, feel free to email us or otherwise to subscribe to our mailing list on our website, which appears on your screen now. If you want to contact us, email retreats at jesuitinstitute.org. .za. Thank you, and we look forward to sharing some of our ministry with you in the coming months and in 2022. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather today, friends, we hear perhaps one of the most challenging of Jesus' teachings, if we are going to be his disciples, that of forgiveness. For the times perhaps we notice that we have been unforgiving, for the times perhaps we realize we have been hurt and wounded by the actions of others. Let's ask the Lord now for mercy and forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul rose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph. 
were 3,000 chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there lay Saul sleeping within the encampment, with his spear struck in the ground at his head, and Abner and the army lay around him. Then said Abishai to David, God has given your enemy into your hand this day. Now therefore let me pin him down to the earth with one stroke of the spear, and I will not strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who can put forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? So David took the spear and the jar of water from Saul's head, and they went away. No man saw it or knew it, nor did any awake, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood afar off the top of the mountain with a great space between them. And David said, Here is the spear, O king. Let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord gave you into my hand today, and I would not put forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me, his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and gracious. It is the Lord who forgives all your sins, who heals every one of your ills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with mercy and compassion. The Lord, the Lord is, is compassionate, compassionate and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord oh, is compassionate and gracious. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does he remove our transgressions. As a father has compassion on his children, the, the Lord's compassion is on those who fear him. The Lord, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual which is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord, that you love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, our Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I say to you that here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, Offer the other also, and from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your coat as well. 
Give to everyone who begs from you, and of him who takes away your goods, do not ask them again. And as you wish that people would do to you, so you to them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons and daughters of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the selfish. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, there's a story told about a Native American who's talking to his grandson about something terrible that had been done to him. And he explains to this boy that he feels as if there are two wolves fighting in his heart. And he says, the one wolf is the wolf of anger and violence, one of revenge, one wanting to get back what he feels was lost. On the other hand, he explains, there is another wolf, one that is compassionate, one that is loving, and one that is forgiving. And the boy says to his grandfather, Grandfather, which wolf will win? Will you be someone who is vengeful or will you be someone who is loving? Will you be someone who is angry or will you be someone who is forgiving? And the grandfather says to his grandson, My boy, the wolf that I feed is the one that will win. It seems to me today that the scriptures ask us a very sobering question and also, I think, put before us what could be the biggest and most difficult challenge of Christian life and Christian teaching. Our ability to, in the face of all sorts of things, that have been done to us, let go and move on. Notice in that first reading, we have Saul, who is basically hunting David. David became so popular after he had slain Goliath that Saul, the king, realized that the people were clapping David on. They were intrigued by this young boy. And so Saul wants to kill David. He's hunting David. And David knows this and he flees. But then David gets the opportunity to kill Saul. He gets the opportunity to get rid of this man that will, when he finds him, get rid of him. But David doesn't do that. Did David do the right thing? Yes, David didn't kill Saul. But notice the motives of David. They weren't really about forgiveness. And this is the qualitative difference between what we hear in that first reading and what Jesus says in the gospel. David doesn't kill Saul because, first of all, he is afraid of God's anger. And second of all, 
David believes that the king is appointed by God and therefore there's no ways that he could kill the king. He chooses the right thing to do, but not necessarily because he is forgiving. In the gospel, Jesus outlines for us the key values of the kingdom. I wonder if there are not three very challenging invitations for us today to help us engage and grapple with these key values at the heart of our Christian life, our Christian belief, and our Christian calling. And if we do not ponder these, it seems to me we might even ponder the death then of our own commitment to Christ. Because surely these things are very important if we are going to call ourselves disciples of Jesus. I want you, friends, to listen to these invitations, but also just notice what Jesus is saying. The first one is, notice the radical rejection of violence of any type by Jesus in that text. You know, we live in a world where violence is often the answer to a problem. Jesus outright rejects violence. He ultimately accepts a violent death himself on the cross, but he will not use violence at all, even when at times he is tempted to do so. We live in a violent country. We live in a time where when politicians don't agree with each other, as we've seen in the last 12 months, one simply kills another or has some hitman take them out. We live where daily we hear of assault and violence done to others. We even have situations in our country where unashamedly politicians stir up violence as they seek opportunities to gain simply for themselves. I wonder if Jesus is not asking us, inviting us to pause and to ask ourselves, what is my position? What is my attitude to the use of violence? Because often, violence is not something that is simply done outside there, but sometimes too, we act in violent ways. Violence happens in many homes, and violence sometimes is not just simply physical, but violence can be emotional and it can be psychological. What is your position, your stance, your action when it comes to the use of violence in any form? I think the second invitation is to ask ourselves simply the question, where are you now? Is there some part or place in you that is hurting or in pain because you are feeling wronged? Maybe even there's a part of you that seeks revenge or wants to retaliate for something that has happened to you. Maybe you are right and justified in feeling wronged because you were wronged and it was not your fault. Maybe it is complicated. The invitation, I think, is for us to call to mind, to become aware and look at the trajectory our lives are going if we hang on to this hurt, this need for revenge and retaliation. Do you want to live with the hurt? and risk becoming bitter and twisted? Or do you want to move on and set yourself free? And I'm not suggesting this is easy, but what will the trajectory be if you hang on to the hurt and, and the need for revenge? How will that lead you to living the fullness of life? 
or will it simply lead you down the road to bitterness, down the road of depression, down the road of becoming twisted and negative? Where are you now? And the third and final invitation is simply to notice that sometimes forgiveness is more important for us, for, for me, so that I can be free. Sometimes when we are hurt or, or when people hurt us, they carry on living their lives. They move on. And yet we stay in that place of hurt. We carry the pain and the burden of that hurt. And so the invitation to forgiveness is not an invitation to forget. It's perhaps one of the most stupid things in the English language when people say, forgive and forget. It's not an invitation to forget. It's an invitation to forgive so that I can begin to discover the freedom of not carrying the burden. It's about my happiness. Can you forgive? Can you let go? And in so doing, set yourself free from the burden of hurt, perhaps, that you carry. That's a mass of ask when we have been wronged. And yet, it seems Jesus is saying to us, if we truly want freedom and happiness, we have to make the choice to forgive so that we can move on. Sometimes those who have hurt us have long moved on and we carry the burden. How do we put that burden down so that our lives become lighter? As we reflect on these very challenging words of Jesus, and, and maybe, and, and I'm so aware of this, maybe we are feeling really stretched by these words of Jesus because we all know the pains and the hurts of our lives and the struggle uh, to forgive. Maybe it's helpful for us to ask the question, which wolf will you feed? Which wolf do you want to feed? And which wolf will win in your heart? So let's pray together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father oh, Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we have heard the challenge of God's Word. And we know too our own struggle at times to take up that challenge. Let's bring our prayers now before the Lord, asking the Lord most especially to help us and give us the grace that we need. For all Christians, that we would be acutely aware of the challenge of the gospel to be generous, compassionate, and forgiving. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us for the grace to forgive, that God would give us the grace to forgive those who have wronged and hurt us intentionally and unintentionally. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For judges, that they would show wisdom and compassion in the exercise of their office. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have been victims of harsh or unfair judgments, that they may recover from the hurt and pain caused to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered to pray today, that we treat others in the same friendly way Christ has treated us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In a moment of silence, let us now pray for those who have hurt us and those we know we might need to forgive so that we can enjoy freedom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we have heard the challenge of your Son Jesus calling us to a life of happiness and freedom. Hear these our prayers. Pray that you give us the grace that we need to be truly as he was, to love and to forgive. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Be God Lord, we ask you to receive us and please accept us. We offer you humble, contrite hearts, emotional equities. Cleanse us from all our sin. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For even though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks for the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, 
that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the cup of blessing in his hands, and confessing your mercy, he gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, this sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask you to accept us also together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to give us his very Spirit, which takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Buti our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus who taught us to pray and in that prayer to say, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Conscious of our need to forgive and sometimes our need to receive forgiveness, Let's pray in those words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with the Spirit. Let's spend a moment now praying for peace in our own hearts, especially those areas of our hearts that really do need peace. Let's pray for peace in our families, in our communities, and in our country and all those places in the world where there is no peace. Offer those you are with at this time, if you're with others, a sign of God's peace.
and we pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the forgiveness of God, the one who takes away the sin of the world. How happy are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God in blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.